everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. We're here today with Lucas. Hello. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Good to be back. It's been a long time. I actually went on to Spotify this morning to see when you were on this podcast last, and it was in episode number 38 about getting a green card. That's right. It's been a long time, huh? Yeah, it's been some years. So yeah, Lucas has been living in the United States, obviously. We're married. And today he's here to talk about something very exciting that we did in the past month and a half. Yeah. What did we do? <laughs> uh, we moved across country. We moved from California to North Carolina. Right. And if you're not familiar with U.S. geography, California is on the West Coast. It is next to the Pacific Ocean. And North Carolina is on the East Coast. It is on the Atlantic Ocean. And so the distance from California to North Carolina is approximately 2,300 miles, Yep, we calculated, or... 3,400 kilometers, something like that. Right. And so Lucas, last month, invited a friend from Brazil, Hoffa, yep. mm -hmm. to drive a U-Haul all yep. the way from California to North Carolina. That's right. It was quite an adventure. <laughs> and so today we thought, why not share everything about the moving experience with you. And yeah, I think it could be very interesting and formative. Yeah. I mean, there there is like the, the basics um, when it comes to moving in the United States that differs from other countries like Brazil, like mm -hmm. my country. For instance, the like you said, the U-Haul, that's a company that you can rent the truck or whatever you need and drive it yourself. Like, yeah. I've never heard anything like that in Brazil. You got to, you know, pay the driver and, and he has a truck and he, you can load in his truck and then he's going to mm -hmm. drive it. Also, you have this option here too, but it's much more expensive. Right. But, and not as fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we decided actually, to go, yeah, we decided to rent yeah. a giant truck, uh, 26, 26 feet, feet, yeah, 26 right? feet long. So my good friend Hafa came and we did the trip together. We did it in four days and... Yeah. Four, was it four days or five days? It was four days total. Okay. We, we we had a stop in Nashville. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were both musicians and Nashville is like Disneyland. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, get get to, we'll, we'll get, get to that part. Okay. So Lucas mentioned U-Haul. That is the company that a lot of people go to even when they need to do trips within a city, moving from maybe one area of town to the next. They might rent a U-Haul truck per hour Normally, they have advertisements on the side like $19.95 per hour or whatnot. But if you're traveling across country, the price goes up. And the size of the truck also plays a role in how much you're going to pay for a trip. So, for example, do you remember how much we paid to transport all our stuff from California to North Carolina? Yes. They only care about the mileage and the days, of course. So the oh, okay. days that you're going to have the truck and how long you're going to drive. <clears throat> so you input where you're, you're going from and where you're going to. Mm -hmm. And and then they give you an estimate. And mm -hmm. they, they say, oh, like in our case, we pay $5,000 to to drive uh, up to 2,500 miles for eight days. So in that oh, okay. period, you can drive the truck wherever you want. If you cross the mileage, then you pay extra. Mm. Say you, you can do the, your trip in four days, like we did. We we had some extra days to keep the truck around, to unload it in our own time. And then, you know, uh, close to the eight days that they gave us, then we returned the truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's 26 feet long. Is that scary to drive a it truck is. that's that long? It, it is. It was not my first rodeo it was you know we moved nice expression <laughs> yeah we moved from northern california to southern california one time and we got a 15 feet uh 15 foot long truck and that was already scary this time it was like a full size 20 26 foot long the truck itself a lot bigger and a lot you know it feels like 
uh, doing turns and all that and like parking mm -hmm. for gas and finding spots to park it's very tricky if you don't have the experience luckily for me you know i had a little bit of experience with the other truck mm -hmm. so it was not as bad and right. and the route that we decided to take w was not as mountainy is that how you say it? mountainous mountainous mm -hmm. so it was piece of cake if you're gonna go take a scenic route across the united states it's not gonna be the one that's, that's yeah the one that you took <laughs> i had no idea i just put it on the map and I was like, okay, this is a short, short route. This is what I'm going to do. When the guy came to pick up our cars and a little bit on that, you know, if you're planning to, to move acro across country in the United States, it's so long that driving your cars involves more people, more hotels, mm -hmm. gas, and like maintenance in your car that is not worth it. So just mm -hmm. ship your car. They have the company that you just pay. They load your car and they drop it there in your, in your address. Right. So we paid that, like twelve hundred bucks for two cars. Or exactly, something. which mm -hmm. is, was was a good deal. So that's mm -hmm. what we did. The cars actually arrived in the house before we did. So when this guy came, I, I was just chatting with him. He was a really cool guy, and I was like, and he, and he actually asked, "Oh, so you're going there? I live close. Like, what route are you gonna take?" And then I, I pulled mm -hmm. up the map and I show. Oh, I'm just I put it here on the map and he gave me this. He was like, "Well, that's definitely the previous route." But that's mm -hmm. very mountainous, right? Mm -hmm. If you go through Colorado and stuff, and it, it was getting close to winter, or it was already in winter, mm -hmm. it was like there's a big chance you're going to hit snow. You're, you're going to have a loaded truck, heavy truck. You're going to go, you know, on steep slopes. Mm -hmm. And you're going to spend more gas, and it's going to be more dangerous. He mm -hmm. was like, if I were you, I would go south. And then he showed me on the map. It's super easy, actually. You take Highway 10, and then highway 20 and then 30 and then 40 it's oh. really straightforward actually really? like the united states made it really easy to understand the yeah. highways and then he said it's not going to be nearly as pretty it's going to be desert you're going to go through arizona new mexico mm -hmm. texas and then from texas you're going to go arkansas until you get to tennessee yeah so it was very smart and he was like there's no mountain there's no snow yeah it's flat so your truck's gonna do a better job he, and then he said if you're coming back unloaded which is like very unlikely for anyone then you take the scenic route through mm -hmm. colorado gotcha. really interesting like this th that sort of stuff that you can only get from like an experienced person not even the map is gonna you know give Telling you that insight you right right, right. Yeah. although i did look up right before this if someone does plan on taking a trip across the united states there is a website called road trip usa that shows a number of different routes from the south pacific way down south all the way up to um, the great northern route up near canada and so if you're doing a road trip across the U.S., do your research, yep. look at all the places that you're going to hit, because I think each route offers something. I yep. think the route that Lucas chose was not as scenic. I, I called you every day and I said, what are you looking at? What are what kind of sights do you see? And you said, it's a bunch of nothing. It was yeah, a big <laughs> desert until you get to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. When you get to, when you cross from Texas, you know, Arizona, New Mexico and Texas, they're really similar. Very dry, Very right? dry, very flat. Mm -hmm. But s some interesting things, you hear a lot about some cities that you, you you don't have a picture of what how they look, like Little Rock. Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, uh -huh. Arkansas, Little Rock. What is the one in Arizona, Phoenix? Mm -hmm. the, one, the, the famous one in New Mexico. Albuquerque? Uh, Albuquerque. There was one in, in, in Texas. Anyway, there were some cities that were just massive. Mm -hmm. huge that you mm -hmm. had no idea you thought it was like just this little town and then you, when you drive through it it was like wow there's like this enormous city here right. in the middle of like what looks like nowhere but of yeah. course if you're, you're there it's just another another place of the state but it's kind of an eye eye opener that mm -hmm. is a lot going on in some of the states that we don't yeah. go very often That's a lot so of true. really fun cities going on and you can see like some cities that they have casinos and like big stadiums and in parks like theme parks mm -hmm. in the middle of you know texas yeah. the middle of new mexico that's so. why i think a lot of people when they think of the united states they imagine they've got one vision in their mind of what it is but truly each state has something to offer and states are so different because i mean not only are state laws a thing where we have a lot of states that have different regulations 
from like just over the border, like you can buy marijuana in one and not in the other, or like you can go to casinos in one and not in the other. Yep. And just the cultural experience going from one place to the next is it can be really enriching. And people are very different too. True. Especially once you get towards the South, yes. right? Where hospitality, it's so in your face Yep. that I actually had to reflect on my own disposition, my facial expressions, because a lot of times people are so friendly and smiley that I go, wow, am I being rude? Am I being mean? Yep. Like, it's how just, am I? Just you different. know? Yeah. Yeah. Another fun thing that is uh, in regards to that is when you're driving from one place to the other, you, you know, you're stopping to sleep in hotels, you're going to restaurants, uh, mm -hmm. convenience store, gas station, and then you talk to people from different mm -hmm. states. And then you see the food changing from right. state to state. You see the accent changing a yeah. lot. You know, the energy is different. And I wouldn't say it's worse or better in different places. Just like, you know, like, well, there's clearly a difference. The place where you live kind of shapes you. Right. And in a trip like that, you can definitely see that. So if you're doing a, a something like this, maybe you're not even moving. Maybe you're, you're planning to come to the United States and drive across, which is really cool. Um, definitely, if you don't have a big truck, definitely take the scenic routes. Mm -hmm. There are many that you hit the national parks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But make an effort to, you know, stop at the hotels and talk to people in the restaurants and, and notice how how big of a change it is between mm -hmm. each each state. You so know? you guys actually made an effort to talk to people? You know, naturally, when you're in the restaurant, yeah. when you get information, when you're talking to the guy at the gas station, at the hotel, checking mm -hmm. in, um, just by basic interaction, you can already tell yeah. a big difference. Speaking of that difference in the restaurants, did you get to have barbecue in the South? Oh, yeah. So in each... Yeah, in each state, you kind of had like a, a goal, like, oh, we're going to go to New Mexico. We drove right next to the border of Mexico. So, like, we're going to have some really good Mexican food there. Mm -hmm. and good we did. tacos and burritos. And, and we things. did, like, good, great stuff. And then we got to, to Texas, and you're like, okay, here it comes, barbecue, yeah. barbecue time. Barbecue, and, and what's their, what are they famous for? So they're famous for their brisket, mm -hmm. for their, their ribs. What's brisket for people that are listening? So brisket is the front part of the cow, like it's like the chest, like down the, the neck. Mm -hmm. So it's naturally a really tough, big, giant hunk of meat, mm -hmm. piece of meat, but really tough that needs like long hours in smoke, the way they cook it there in barbecue smoke. And then after 12 hours of cooking the right mm -hmm. way, it just melts in your mouth and has a really unique mm -hmm. flavor. So that's one of the the staples in when it comes to right. Texas Texas barbecue. Right, and had the fixins too. Right, the fixins which fix, like, fixins yeah. are the sides, the beans, mm -hmm. and also the mac and cheese, the mac and cheese, and the potato, the the potato salad. Mm -hmm. Very classic. Oh, there's just a lot of fixins. <laughs> oh, I love Texas food. I mean, Texas food for me is yeah. it hits hits the spot. But then once you cross to Arkansas, mm -hmm. it's like close to Tennessee. Then it's like they're really f big on fried chicken and they're spiced, mm. spicy chicken. And then it's cool to do some research before and see what's, you know, what's their thing what's food their wise. Thing? Yeah. And then you already look for the restaurants along the route. Yeah. That's I think that's what makes the, the trip so fun. Right. It's knowing that you're going to hit different spots. You're going to see different people and eat mm -hmm. different food. Yeah. You brought a friend over from Brazil. Right. Like, thank goodness Hoppe was there with you. Right. But I'm wondering how his impression was, like, driving across. What place stood out to him? What did he like the most? Was it just Nashville because of music? And Well, or? you know, in Brazil, you don't have a lot of deserts. You have mm -hmm. dunes, but they don't look like what you guys have here. So there is a part when you're driving end of Arizona to New Mexico, beginning of Texas, that is like a classic desert looking thing where you see mm -hmm. hay balls. Hay, how to say that? Hay. Oh, they're not hay. They're not hay. Um, they're like, you know those. Tumbleweeds. Those tumbleweeds. Yeah, they, see, that looks like the old Looney Tunes exactly. shows where you see Wiley e. Coyote going and there's I like know. tumbleweeds rolling along. So we, we made comments yeah. of like, wow, when we, we were watching those cartoons, they were mm -hmm. big in Brazil. Right. We thought they were like 
imagination of like people drawing that stuff oh just inventing it <laughs> yeah we didn't know like maybe or they, they were like uh. exaggerating that sort of scene like oh like the yeah the the road runner and the you know yeah that's a monument valley. and then when that's we got funny. when we uh. got to some certain spots in the desert it was like oh my god it's just like that the cactus and the you know mm -hmm. those what, what's what's the name of the again of that The, the the ball that rolls like oh tumbleweed tumbleweed and also the yeah. the red mountains and the ro the rock formations right and it was like wow that that was for Brazilians the desert was really impressive okay you know because we're used to forests we're used um, to but also when it comes to regions with a lot of trees when you get to mm. Arkansas Tennessee and North Carolina especially then the trees just take over right and, it, and they're really different trees than what we have in Brazil they're like tall trees they're A lot, of a lot of pine trees and a yeah. lot of oak trees that go that shoot really high in the straight trunks. Very mm -hmm. different than different than Brazil. That's really impressive right. for us. Yeah, I think that's actually an important thing to mention too. When we first got to North Carolina, which we haven't even explained why we moved here, but um, we can get to that in one second. When we got here, I met up with some teacher at a school to ask about the school for the girls and. I said Appalachian Mountains, which is there's an, a mountain range called, and if you're from California, it's called the Appalachian Mountain Range. And the guy said, you know what? I'm protecting you. You are going to be considered ignorant in the South. If you ever say Appalachian, you have to say Appalachian. Um, so I'm just letting you guys know, you will hear people say Appalachian in the south that is their pronunciation for their mountain range and yep. there's a lot of history and tradition that goes along with it so and it's it's yeah. just gorgeous it's, it's gorgeous just, like yeah. when we drove for brazilians is also really weird to see trees with no leaves just sticks <laughs> it was just sticks and for half especially I, i've seen it but half was like wow there's not a single leaf and they yeah. all fall down i was like yep that's And that's, then, yeah, that's so weird that you guys don't have no. seasons where there's Brazil's trees just evergreen, dropping. Evergreen, always. And yeah. um, I'm sure some parts in the north, maybe. Yeah, you guys are a massive country. It's, it's <laughs> big. Yeah, but um, mm. most, I, I, I'd say 90% of Brazil is evergreen. Is, yeah. Is, and so even, you know, you come to North Carolina in, in, in the fall, mm -hmm. it's just so beautiful. But for a Brazilian, it's seeing no leaves is impressive it's like yeah. it's a new thing for your eyes yeah and that was really cool although i would recommend coming in october rather um, than seeing the sticks because yeah, it is uh yeah the oranges yellows and reds probably trump just right. sticks yeah so beautiful things appalachians if you are do you, if you end up in the appalachians i should say Uh, make sure to go to the great smoky mountain national park it's actually the number one national park in the united states it's only an hour away from where we currently live did you know that before moving here i did know that, that because i did a lesson one. yeah i did a lesson on geography and that was uh, I think, in my geography isn't it, lesson isn't it, isn't it weird though because we hear a lot about yosemite yellowstone all those and that one for me i never heard of it and it's the number one yeah well you know why i think it is now that i i really consider just where people are located yosemite's the to me the most mind-blowing place i've ever been it's just stunning but it's next to areas of california where there are fewer people nevada where there's i mean the population is a little bit more sparse and if you're in near the great smoky mountains national park you've got tennessee like virginia like georgia atlanta all of these places that have like the population is pretty high and i think that's just You know, hey, where do you want to go this weekend? Oh, they can just pop on over to the national park, and just I just a think center that's point, center point for all the everybody yeah, around. Yeah, but I I think that that plays into it. I I haven't been there yet, so maybe it's just the most beautiful place ever, and it's better than Yosemite, which is hard to believe. But I think the the population. <laughs> I think you're a little biased because you're from California. No, it's, you know, somebody's <laughs> really incredible. Hey, John Muir, he traveled across the United States, and he said that was the best place that he ever went. So There you go. So three <laughs> national parks for everybody to visit. This three. one, what's the name? Uh, Great Smoky Mountains Great national Smoky Park. Mountains, Yosemite, and Yellowstone. Oh, Yellowstone we didn't mention, but that's way up north. I know. Yeah. Or Monument Valley, 
which we were talking about Roadrunner, and that's where that actually took place. There you you go. see a lot of tumbleweeds in those big red um, buttes or the rock formations out right. in the middle of nowhere. So um, before we end this chat, I do have a few other questions for you. Number one, why are we moving or why did we move to North Carolina? Well, that's the million dollar question. Huh? Everybody <laughs> asks us. Um, I, th I, I would say I think we have different point of views, but they merge somewhere. For me, geographically makes more sense. Mm -hmm. No, I was because of work. I was traveling to, traveling to Miami a lot, and traveling from LA to Miami feels like traveling abroad. It's so far; mm -hmm. it's almost six hours. So, from here to Miami is an hour and twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. From here to New York is one hour and twenty minutes flying. I can mm -hmm. drive to Nashville. I can drive to Atlanta. Those are two big music cities. Mm -hmm. We can fly to LA or Sacramento, no problem, and it's four hours closer to Brazil flying. Right. So geographically, it's a, a special place. And then on top of that, we were looking for, you know, a place next to nature, mm -hmm. a place where, you know, we could hike more and we could see more trees and, you know, a little different than what we had in L.A. <laughs> and, yeah. and then you can weigh in on why Asheville, because I, you know, before you mentioned that, it was so fast. I, I've never heard of the city at all. I mean... I could say a million things about Asheville. If you look on YouTube and you type in Asheville, you're going to find a video about this place and just the surrounding area. And you're going to go, oh, I understand now. For me, I have an obsession with Berlin, Berlin, Germany. It's artsy. It's edgy. I mean, obviously, it's changed a lot over the years. But for me, I get this vibe that Asheville is what Berlin was maybe in the 90s in the mountains, though, and then surrounded by waterfalls and um, the largest mansion, the Biltmore Estate. Yep. Um, so there's just a number of things to do. I feel like you could never get bored. Some of the sense. highlights of Asheville. I think, you know, there's over 40 breweries in the city. Right. There are over 150 waterfalls in a, I think it's a 50 mile radius. Mm -hmm. So a lot of hiking. Great there's weather. A there's a food scene. Oh That's yeah. That's a big food That's scene. It. A lot of interesting restaurants, unique unique places. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a friend from from Nashville that that he said, oh, it's normal for people to travel to Asheville, which is like a four hour drive just to eat because mm -hmm. it's, there's so many cool restaurants. There's also a music scene, and it's right. kind of. Would you say it's a little bit hippish? I no, I like wouldn't modern. say like alternative. I would say like it's more mm -hmm. uh, it's up and coming. Like I get the impression that it's also a pre Nashville. Like it's before Nashville became Nashville. Like this is what Asheville is right now. There's a like every single person we've talked to either plays the guitar or sings. That's true. And that's crazy. Also on top of that, very important. It's like very music. Too. Yeah, it's very artsy. There is the mm. arts, the Rivers Arts, River Arts District. That that one, right? Where that's you the know, area that reminds me a lot of Berlin. Yeah, apparently, how was it? Like uh, there was a bunch of like abandoned warehouses, and mm -hmm. then the the city kind of let the yeah. artists install their shops there. Right. So they transformed uh, this whole area in like a lot of you know art studios where people are doing all sorts of arts, from sc sculpting so to painting to ton of ceramics uh, yeah and murals too on the wall it, it reminds me so much of Kreuzberg in Berlin yeah. you just you've got just art everywhere and yeah. the vibe just walking through there you kind of you feel something special like so, something's so, being yeah. created here so, so there yeah. you go you put one and two together how do you say it? two and two together yeah, two and two. <laughs> one and two together <laughs> makes three or two and two together makes four and the, uh, but that's the reason why yeah we moved here and it's cheaper too which i mean oh yeah i kind of want to be transparent about the prices that we were paying because you guys are some of you are probably thinking about moving to the u.s and i just want to let you know i mean that's what this podcast is about right so on our very simple house that we were living in in the valley so not in the heart of la we spent over yeah it was four thousand dollars a month just on rent Yes. Right. And it was not a special house at all. No. Nope. 
Uh, and the area wasn't that wonderful. It was okay. You know, childcare was much more expensive. Like you start adding things up and you're getting close to $10,000 a month. Right. Yeah. On spending. Easily. Easily. With whereas, kids, yeah. Whereas here, it's like less than half of that. Exactly. So, you know, you just... So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, we moved to LA for a reason. We needed the city for a while because of the music scene. But if you're moving to the United States, if you want to, unless you absolutely love LA for the reasons, like for the nature and all the stuff for Yosemite, for you want to be close to that, all that stuff, sure, you're going to pay the price. It's not at all close to Yosemite. But it's the driving distance, right? Like, say you want to be. That's really far. Four hours? Four and a half hours. Yeah. That, not for a Brazilian. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, if you don't have a reason to be in LA and you're maybe not on a budget, but it matters how much you're going to pay. Do not go to LA. <laughs> right. The United States has so many hidden gems, I would say, to explore. I mean, we can talk about Austin. We can talk about Idaho. We can talk about, you know, a Salt Lake City, the East Coast. There's just so many, so, so many, many cool cities yeah. with a bunch of things to offer. So, so yeah, unless you have to be there, um, I would choose a different place because yeah. it's really expensive. Yeah. Is there any other piece of advice that you'd like to give people listening about moving across country? I actually have one thing okay. I would like to say. But yeah, uh, you go first. Okay. Boxes <laughs> at Home Depot is cheaper than... Are cheaper. Are cheaper than in uh, at U-Haul or any other, you know, from my research. So I would okay. buy boxes from would, Home Depot, but also look on Marketplace. Take your Amazon orders and just reuse your boxes. That's right. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah, if you need like bigger boxes. And, gotcha. Yeah. But also Facebook Marketplace, people would just yes. give away boxes. Exactly. What else? Definitely hire help to load your truck if you have a lot of stuff because it's not just about saving money or loading yourself. It's about making sure that stuff don't move. Doesn't because move. Because it doesn't mm -hmm. move because the truck moves a lot and jumps and and you don't want all your stuff just loose there inside and the vault yeah getting ruined and breaking and so they did a great job just making sure everything was so tight and mm -hmm. with ropes so Bound it's up. worth it's worth hiring some help i think that's okay. that would be my my thing yeah and definitely don't over extend your drive how would you say that don't drive too much yeah like you set a goal like okay i'm gonna drive seven to eight hours something that you're normally comfortable and do sleep and do stop at a hotel. Don't force it because it can mm. be really dangerous, especially at night. Right. Do you know how much you spent on gas? A thousand dollars. One thousand dollars on yeah. gas. A thousand dollars. It was almost round because right. yeah, the truck just right. drinks it was like, that stuff. It's I know in loaded, California, you know? filling yeah. up it was what two thirty, and then you went no. like to California the is almost six, right? The gas. No, no, no. What I'm saying is when in California, when you filled up the tank, it was like $230 versus oh, yeah, like versus going to the next state. And it was like 120 yeah, Half of the price. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. How is, about you? Yeah. The only other tip I had was if you're moving addresses in the U.S., go directly to USPS, uh, the United States Postal Service. You can get informed delivery. And you can figure out what letters were being sent to your old address and have them forwarded for a total of like $1 to your new address so that, you know, you don't miss out on any of your mail. Yep. Other than that, I don't have any other tips, I think. Do you have anything else? That's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you just don't drive. Just make sure you take in the places you're going to hit because it's just like in Brazil, when you travel north to south, mm -hmm. it changes so much that it would be, if you're just driving and sleeping in, you can learn a lot just by, you know, doing some simple things and taking a break on each state and just taking it in and, mm -hmm. you know, add that to your experience. Right. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Of course. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.